Well, let me tell you something, brother. Snort, snort, snort. Tell you. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip. Go. Good. Right. Cool. All right. So I think we're good. We're full screen. Just like if it feels like yesterday, Phil. <laughs> Which yesterday? When, you know, we were hanging out like 15, 16 years ago at MAGFest or yesterday when I was on your podcast. I mean, we, ha we actually have a history that a lot of I, people don't know the whole history. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, I mean, I guess, but at the same, like, I, I got to be honest, 15, 16 years, I don't remember. I know. Much of that, right? Um, so if you say we were hanging out, then we, then we hung out. So, uh, I mean, we, we probably played a few games together, I would imagine, over the, over the years, yeah? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I actually, if you remember, I was a guest at a screw tech gaming convention in 2012, 2013. I was actually a featured oh. guest. And I even was one of the finalists at the uh, Iron Man of gaming competition. You had the Iron Man of gaming. Yes. The, that was uh, so far ahead of its time while also still being 20 years too late. <laughs> People uh, are yeah. saying your volume's still a little low. Is there any way you could boost it anymore? Yeah, sure. Let me see what I can do on my end. Let's see. Uh, do 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 do. So I don't use Discord very often. So let me kind of go into my settings here and check things yep. out. Uh, do, 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 output volume. Let's see. How about this? Is that better? Am I volume? Am I, did I boost me at all? It sounds about no. the same, I think. Okay, let me, let me change this up. Here you go. Is this a little? Uh-oh, now you're muted. <laughs> I don't even. I'm still muted? Now, now you're unmuted. Okay, uh, well, I, I think this is what's going to have to do right here. Hey, right. Look at, look at, there's a picture of me in your background. Look at that. Of course. I've wow. upgraded, sir. Look at my setup now. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'll tell you what. You, what an upgrade. Great job. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. So, so let's get started because I want to respect your time. I know that, you know, you might have stuff going on today. Um, and, and just to forewarn everyone and just to, uh, you know, preface the whole conversation we're about to have. Stuttering Craig is on here today, and thank you for your time, Craig, for being on my, my Level 1 podcast um, to have a conversation with me about last year, what happened with the events leading up to, including, and after my appearance on the Side Scrollers podcast, because there's been a lot of stuff said, all right, on my side particularly for sure, and a lot of heated stuff I've said. Craig has responded on his content, and we never really sat down to have a conversation about it publicly. And I feel like this is the best way to do it is to have a forum where we're just going to be cordial with each other. We're going to talk about it, hash it out, figure out exactly what happened and figure out how to move forward from here. This is not an attack session on Craig. I've already said this right before Craig showed up. So I'm going to say it again because now we're actually have him on the show. This is not, oh, I don't like Craig. Let's all in the chat rally against him and insult him and stuff. This is not, oh, you know, let's all take pot shots on Craig. There is no surprise guests that are going to show up. There is no shocking gotcha questions here. It's literally not about anything about Craig's background or nothing. This is about just our interaction last year. That's the point. And I want, Craig, I want you to know that up front because I know you had said that, of course, my detractors have to interject themselves into every piece of anything I'm involved in. And they've been contacting Craig saying, oh, he's going to get you. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. That's not going to happen. All right. Well, but now, and, and, oh, go ahead. And that's, that's great. I was going to say, and to be, to be fair, I mean, I have invited you. I, I've tried to do this probably three or four times since the end of that show uh, to kind of have this exact conversation. So I am glad we're, we're actually getting around. To, like I said, I, I said multiple times, I don't care if it was on our show or if it's on your show. I, I don't care. I think this is great. I'm glad we're able to. All right, good. Now, that being said, I'd like to introduce Handsome Tom and Perfect Liz to the show. No, I'm just kidding. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, honestly, I would love that. I would honestly love that. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I think what we should do to start the conversation um, is give a little bit of background about Craig. Because a lot of people, you know, on my show may not know, but Craig's been in this space for a very, very long time. Craig, in my opinion, was one of the innovators of making video game content on the internet. I mean, in the mid two thousands, right? You were making big big view content on, on your screw attack website. And this was before the era of like YouTube being prominent and everything. Like you were there in the forefront covering video games, doing countdowns, news stories, going to conventions, doing all kinds of stuff. And you've always been a prominent person in that space. It's not like you've come out of nowhere now with this side scroller show in the last year, you actually have a history a big established history of making very prominent content. Um, that's how I knew Craig 
is because I used to actually watch the side scroller show way back in the day in the mid 2000s. And I was a fan of the angry video game nerd who was associated with Screw Attack at the time. So that's kind of how I got turned on to their content and started watching. Um, over the years, I did have association with Craig and Screw Attack. For example, I went to, which I know Craig says he doesn't remember. I don't blame him. Uh, way before I was even a YouTuber, I went to MAGFest, uh, this this gaming convention, and we hung out like the whole time. Like we, I was with these guys and we were playing Street Fighter. We played Call of Duty together at the time. There was a Call of Duty uh, competition and we even judged a like a rock band competition together i don't even know if you remember did that we? <laughs> yes we did we were, wow. we were both judges on the panel judging people doing rock band and stuff it was fun okay. so okay. so that that was like our first personal interaction and then fast forward to years later i was a youtuber i was a big youtuber in the gaming space i was like not top top but you know i was bringing in 10 million views a month on my dsp gaming channel and I wanted to go to conventions and stuff. And I had contacted you when you said you were reviving uh, the Screw Attack Gaming Convention. You were bringing it out of retirement. And I said, I would love to be there as a guest. And you had me as a guest. And let me tell you, Craig, you were the most gracious dude. Like, I knew that you didn't really remember me from MAGFest at the time. You were like the most nice guy to me. You were there. And, you know, you, you, I had a table, a vendor booth. And there was a little misunderstanding about a vendor booth with someone else. And you, we, we hashed all that out. And I, basically, you, you were so cool. And, you know, so from my history of knowing you, Craig, um, you were just a really nice guy. You were a good guy in the, in the gamer space making this content. We hung out at MAGFest. You were so personable. You're such a nice guy. Meet you at ScrewTech Gaming Convention. So all the history I know of you is that you're just a really solid dude, right? So what, so what changed? What changed, Phil? What, when, did, when did I become so irrelevant? <laughs> oh, irrelevant. Like, not irrelevant. That's not, <laughs> absolutely not. But... Basically, I want to preface this of how this whole thing came about, why I would even like want to be on your show and stuff like uh -huh. that. So I heard, what was it, early? It was either late 2022 or early 2023. I heard through the grapevine, hey, Phil, did you hear that Side Scrollers is coming back? And I was like, no, I didn't know that. Let me check it out. So I actually did my research and I saw that you had announced that you were going to bring back Side Scrollers. It was going to be a fun podcast about gaming and, you know, all this stuff. And I got interested because I'm like, wow, that's cool. You know, I used to listen to the show when it was audio only way, way back when. And it would be cool to right. see a revival. Now, I didn't know if you were going to have anyone back from the old show or anything. But I was like, I'm just curious. So I actually started listening to and watching your show when you revived it. And I just I was thinking in the back of my head. Now, I know at this point, everyone hates me, right? Like I'm the guy you love to hate on the Internet. I'm the guy everyone dumps on as a content creator. But I'm like, man, it would be fascinating if out of nowhere, out of the blue, if Stuttering Craig contacted me and asked me to be on a show, because that would be wild, because I don't go on shows, right? I don't do interviews. I don't do anything. It would be such a cool thing for a guy from my past who, you know, I have a good relationship with. I mean, it's been 10 years since I talked to the guy, but it would be pretty cool if that happened. And then lo and behold, you actually did. And I never thought in a wild, wildest dreams you would have. So what I'd like to, to preface is that now we're getting to, you know, talking about what happened last year. What actually happened that you reached out to me like that out of the blue after 10 years of no contact? Yeah, I think that, you know, when Side Schoolers was starting, uh, you know, the show's evolved, a little, right? Because it's now a decade later, right? You can't be doing the same thing that you were doing a decade before and expect success. You're evolving. Fine. So, you know, Side Schoolers, the old show used to be uh, once a week for 30, but that was podcast. That was it. 6 2013 it was like uh, craig your audio is breaking up a little bit and i don't know if it's your settings or your mic it's kind of sucks it is breaking up a little bit. so the long and short of it was like and uh oh yeah craig we can't hear you now at all for some reason <laughs> i don't know what's going on it, it, showing that i'm yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, still you're breaking up. People are saying if you talk louder, you get closer to the mic. I don't know. It could be sensitivity settings in Discord Should as well. Should I get closer to the microphone? Actually, is it that's actually good. All right, then I will sit right here the entire <laughs> Seriously, time. Seriously, like that's like really good. <laughs> okay, then we'll we'll just hold my microphone up right here. Okay, so when side scrollers when when I was like, okay, we got to bring back side scrollers, and the idea behind it was, I I left the video game space in its entirety for better part you know for about a year i went and uh, i worked at the firearm and when i 
when I left that, that uh, startup, uh, I looked back at the video game. And I didn't really have a whole lot of intention of ever going back. And, but I looked back to the video game industry places, like what happened? And that was the origin story for sides. So, you know, the idea of bringing it back was really like there needs to be show needs to come back. And, and, you know, when we first did the show, the idea was we were going to try to mimic it after the old show. And the internet's not the same as it was 10 years. So naturally the show had to shift and the show has shifted. And, uh, you know, it's become more of a, a live, live, it's not necessarily a podcast. People do listen to the audio version of the show, but it's, it's more about being there in the live experience, right? So uh, there's always three of us, four of us, and the fifth, fourth person, chat. Chat always has a voice as well. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I, just like back at Screw Attack, uh, I knew that just how you got to know uh, Screw Attack through the video game nerd, or people got to know, um, any of the number of partners that we've had throughout through, throughout the years through Screw Attack, there's all it's always good to grow through association and it, whole rising tides aspect. And that was always uh, something from the start with was uh, I want there to be a base base crew and we'll have guests every day and it'll be a rotating rotating cast of uh, characters. And that's where it came down for you know we we did a few I did a few interviews um, beforehand and. And um, the idea was, well, I'll just reach out to everybody that I used to know and um, see if they're interested. So um, you were brought up, and uh, I had not heard or talked to you in a decade. As you said, I certainly didn't know any of the lore uh, and, and kind of really anything. Uh, I didn't know if you'd seen success on YouTube. I didn't know uh, if you'd seen uh, – I certainly didn't know about the detractor stuff. Uh, so that was, you know, when we announced it, when I reached out to you and you're like, sure, you know, um, I was like, okay, cool. And I, and the intention was for you to come on and just be a regular, regular guest on the show. Right. Uh, and this, keep in mind we're, I think we're like two weeks into the show. I think we launched February 5th. Um, and I think I announced you like the first of March, maybe like February 20th or whatever. And, and when I announced you, uh, and I announced several people at, you know, on that show, um, it was like, I remember almost immediately getting emails were like, dude, you sure about that? Like, are you sure? Do you know what's going on? I was like, no, you know, I didn't, I didn't know know, your entire background. So then the flood of communication comes in and some people are like, you should not have Phil on your show. You should not. And I was like, like, my thing is communication. I like having conversations once again, which is why I've reached out to you in the past about like, Hey, well, let's just hash this out. And, uh, so naturally you know, people, they reach out, they're like, do you know this about Phil? Do you know this about Phil? No. And it became very obvious that, that there was a lot of lore to you and a lot of questions about you that uh, people didn't either were assuming or didn't know the answer, um, which is why I reached out. And I remember saying like, okay, listen, the intention was to have you on the show, but it's very obvious. Like, we just have this show, do a n- normal show then and not address the elephant in the room, which is, you know, the fact that you haven't been show in a decade that you have all these questions about mobile games and blah, 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 and all this stuff, like then number one, it's a missed opportunity for you. And I don't want to be the guy who, who just like ignores all these questions. Right? Um, Cause you know, it's interesting. Uh, so that's how it, and I was like, well, then we need to do an interview. And that's how the interview came about. Right. And uh, so we did the interview. You gave us five hours, which, very nice. I think you probably would have gone longer had, uh, had, you know, everyone not kind of been tired. I mean, talking for five hours and doing that for five hours was a lot. Right. And, you know, you, you told us we were very professional. You really enjoyed the interview. And, uh, yes. That, I remember you saying in particular, you wanted to do it again. Like, right. okay, cool. Um, okay. Hold and- on. Because people are making some very positive suggestions. They're saying if there's anything in your settings, that's like noise cancellation or, or stuff like that. Cause what's happening is you're talking. And as soon as you stop, it's dropping the next word you say as if noise cancellation is like kicking in on your mic. That seems to be the issue. I don't think it's actually the distance. It's some kind of a noise cancellation filter or, you know what I mean? Like a noise gate. Yeah, this is weird. Um, Good. Dio says there is a settings gear icon in the lower left of Discord. You Mm -hmm. click on that, there will be a voice and video tab or menu. And then there's an input sensitivity all on the left, and that would fix it. 
So if I unclick that, will that be better? Let's see. Is that, I, is that better now? That sounds great, actually. I think we did okay. it. Thank goodness. Yeah, that, apparently, uh, that was apparently the culprit here. All right. Sensitivity. We've done it. F you, Discord. <laughs> um, okay, so, so that leads us to we do the interview. and right. uh, Well, and actually, think- let's, let, me, let me jump in because mm-hmm. I do want to talk a little bit about you know, my perspective get going into this interview and the conversations we had. All right, mm-hmm. because we want to be transparent about this. And I, I want to hear your perspective and I want to give my perspective because let's be honest, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. That's what happens in all these situations. OK, so from my perspective, you contact me out of the blue and you say, I want you to be guest on the show. And I'm thinking in my head, I've been watching the show and the show has been pretty entertaining. These guests get to kind of showcase their expertise from where they come from. They talk about the topics you're talking about. So it makes them look personable. It makes them look good. And then they get to kind of talk about their brand or whatever they're working on. And for me, I actually was just launching a new channel called DSP React. And the idea was that I was going to try to use this appearance as a way to kind of launch this channel. I had all these ideas for things for the channel and everything. And this is a way to get it out to a new audience. Maybe you're not interested in seeing me play games, but maybe you want to see some kind of React style content, right? So originally I was just supposed to be the guest. And then you said, well, there's an elephant in the room. All these Mm -hmm. people want me to interview you. And I was like, well, I knew this was coming because you might not realize this, but the year before, a lot of other prominent YouTubers have been talking about me in a very negative light. Okay, one of them was actually Moist Critical. And he had okay. called me out for my grifting, that I was ba- e-begging too much, and how could I do this to my viewers and stuff like that. And when he had done that, I was like, you know, I agree with him, because now when I look back at my how I was talking on a particular stream, I'm like, I, I agree with this guy. Like, I'm being, I'm being a miserable wretch. I'm being a, an ungrateful jerk. I said, but the thing is, if that's the case, right, why don't you ever interview me? Like, if everyone has a problem with me and the way I conduct myself or whatever, I would just like to be interviewed and treated like a person rather than yelled at across the internet from their people's high perches. It's kind of like punching down, right? I'm just a little rinky-dink guy, and I got these giant YouTubers talking about me in a negative way. And I had announced the year before, I want to do an interview. Well, of course, who contacts me? Who wants to do an interview? All my detractors, all these assholes. And I'm like, you know what? After thinking about it, I don't want to do an interview because they're just going to waste my time. It's just going to be really unfair treatment. So then when you reached out to me and now all of a sudden you're saying, oh, this is going to be an interview. I'm thinking, dude, I know Craig. Craig is a straight guy. You know, he's not he's a straight shooter. He's not going to do anything to screw me during this interview. He's going to hit me with hard questions and I want him to hit me with hard questions. I think I even had told you that previously when we were talking. So you, you can ask me whatever the heck you want. You might not you like said, the you answers. Said you want, yeah, you said you wanted it to be the definitive DSB interview, right? Correct. And so, and to be and just to be clear, did I did I did I do anything during that interview that was dishonorable or did I hit you with anything that that cuz like I said, you you mm-hmm. finished that interview and you thought it was very fair. So yeah. Did, did, I would say there were a few times that things were suspect, but at the same time, it was never outright like, oh, disrespectful gotcha moment or something like that. The one thing everyone's going to say is when Keemstar showed up, right? Now, I don't know how that came about. You know what? Let's clear the air about that right now. Sure. How, how on earth did Keemstar end up in my interview? Because obviously that was a shock. And if you remember how it happened, it was really questionable circumstances. Someone ddos me off the internet. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't even continue the interview. And as I got DDoS attacked, Keemstar showed up on the show and everyone's like, what the heck is this? Like, I'm sure this is a coincidence, right? So, so what actually happened? Yeah. Well, uh, I, if, if, and once again, it's been 18 months, so I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to look through my, my, uh, DMS right now to make sure I'm saying this correctly. But Mm -hmm. from what I recall, uh, he had like most people at the time, um, uh, had reached out via DM and, let me let me see. Let me I'm actually I'll I don't want to I don't like to divulge private conversations, but let me go back as best I possibly can to see. Let's see. We did that on what FYI, because I don't know if you know if you know this, Craig. I had Kim on the show last week and we hashed everything out. We're good. Cool. Excellent. So, there's no issue. There's no bad blood between me and him. So it's not like, oh, you're going to divulge something that you know he's going to be pissed about. Nah, he we even talked about the appearance and everything, why he was on the show. So it's all good. I just I want to hear from your perspective how it came okay. about. So, so I think somebody had mentioned the idea of having him on and I was like, well, if you're watching, then DM me. So he DM me and, and, um, and the idea was like, look, you said beforehand, you didn't want to talk with him. Right. And, and I was like, fine, that's fine. Now you said your internet went out. Right. So that was like, okay, well, let's, let's take this opportunity to, you know, we, we got Phil here. Let's take this opportunity to bring Keem in. Right. Cause he had DM me and he was like, let's talk. 
And if you recall during that interview, like I was attempting to honor your word there. You said you didn't want to talk to Keem. So I went out of my way to be like, listen, we're, we'll only have Keem on if you're okay with it. And the intention, and I think I've said this at the time, was to build a bridge, right? Was mm -hmm. to build a bridge. And, and to think about this, you probably wouldn't have had Keem on last week had we not done that on side scrollers, had it not opened up the, the communication be between the two, right? Um, maybe, I disagree. I, I would have had hey. Keem on regardless. I don't think that okay. him being on the interview had anything to do with him being on this show okay. last week. That's fair. <laughs> to totally fair. But like I said, I'm just I'm just going off assumptions. I don't know. That's fine. That's I want to hear your perspective. So I this yeah. is good. This is good. So so the idea was to build a bridge, right? And and uh, it, whether it worked or not, that's fine. So we had John, and uh, and when your internet came back, you know, it was like okay, let you know, I I believe, and like I said, been 18 months. I believe we pulled Keem back, brought you back on, and said, hey, we have Keem here. Are you okay with this? Before Keem came back on, right? And uh, the, the way I like to think of it is probably like uh, it's, it's halftime of a basketball game, right? So you go down to the sideline reporter to talk to the coach, right? Or something along those lines. And you get there. And like Keem being the color commentator at the time to provide, hey, what do you, how do you think this is going type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if, if that's the best analogy that I can give like off the cuff. But yeah, it wasn't meant to be malicious by any means. Uh, and nothing, no, nothing that we've ever done has meant to be malicious towards you. And, I, and I've stated that continuously in my communication with you. It's never been meant to be, uh, to tear you down or make, as your words, make money off your misery. That's never been an intention at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. So, so I understand what you're saying. I get it. But you have to understand that from an outsider's perspective, okay? Even what you just said, a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people didn't know that I had told you beforehand that I didn't want to talk to Keem on your, on this interview. Mm -hmm. So you've been told ahead of time, I don't want an interaction with this man. Literally one of my trolls who works at Comcast DDoSs me. I'm serious. This is proven. It happened. There's actually evidence now and the person's been fired. So okay. the troll who works at my ISP DDoSs me to kick me off my own interview. And you bring specifically the guy I told you, I don't want any involvement in this interview onto the interview stream. So okay. I think you can so understand how that looks, right? <laughs> so while, while you're gone, I'm, I'm looking, I'm actually looking at our DMs with, with uh, right now. He said, mm -hmm. he said, let me pop on. So when he comes back, he can respond. Right. Cause I, be I believe, and once again, 18 months, um, I believe we were talking about Keemstar beforehand. Right. So he was, he was broached. The conversation about him was brought up. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm of the mindset that if you're, I would rather talk with somebody than about somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've, said that many, many times on our show, and I say that right now, which is why, once again, I'd much rather talk with you than about you. Um, so I think that was the situation. His say, he said, let me pop in so when he comes back, uh, he can respond, right? And the idea that you said something about Keem, Keem then responded, you come back, and you can then respond to what Keem said while still keeping you separate, right? But the opportunity was there. It was like, hey, well, look, once again, Keem, you can talk about DSP. DSP, you can talk about Keem. Why don't you just talk to each other right now and, and hash all this shit out and everyone's, everyone's better for it, right? So, you know, if, if you saw it as, uh, like, like I said, my goal ultimately wasn't to, you know, create any distrust or anything. It was more meant to be a positive experience. And um, hopefully it was. Let me, okay, so from my perspective, all right, mm -hmm. I, you're absolutely right. So I'm getting DDoS attack. I come back and you ask me, hey, Keem's on the show already. Is it okay? Can we have him on? You absolutely did that. I can confirm 100%. I mean, it's already recorded, but yes, you did that. Yeah. And that's very respectful of you that you did that. And I said, yes. In my mind, I'm already desperately trying to get back on the show because if it looks like I cut out of the show, everyone on the internet is going to say I'm a coward. I ran from the tough questions. So I'm doing everything I can to get back as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. The moment I get back, He's there, and it's like, you're. I've already green grilled, and this is probably, you know, a very stressful thing going on, I'm sure you could figure out for me, and then to now be presented with the man who I told you specifically I didn't want to talk to on the show, yeah, it smacked me in the face, and then on top of that, you say, well, is it okay? Now, what if I say no? Again, now that makes me look bad. I look like I'm the guy who doesn't want to play ball, who isn't willing to talk, who's just a, a, an obstinate jerk, who just wants to, you know, have it his way. So, of course, I'm going to say yes. Now, in reality, 
Did anything come out of that conversation with Keem? No. What happened was we went back and forth for like five minutes. Nothing came of it. And then he plugged his happy punch boxing, okay, which is really the reason why he was on the show. All right. That's why he wanted to be on your show to plug his upcoming content. All right. He well, did want to talk to me for sure. That's true. But he definitely was on the show to plug his content. And that's literally what you allowed him to do is do an advertisement. Okay. So, okay. R- r- real quick. And once again, it's been 18 months, it's been a year and a half. Maybe my, my, my things are a little fuzzy, right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking through my email and I actually don't see any reference to Keemstar at all in that. So maybe it was mentioned beforehand. I don't know. Maybe I knew there was some sort of beef between you guys or something. Yeah, we did. We had beef on the internet and I believe right. at one point, I don't actually don't know if specifically it was like Keemstar but I know you had said, you know, is there any, I said, I just want it to be us, right? I don't want to have guests mm. coming on and stuff. Right, right, I want right, it to right, be right, right. our conversation, right? That's what it was supposed to be. So, okay, so having this guy is shocking that he's in there. Why is he on this, this interview, right? Okay. I get it, right? I get it. So, okay. but with that, with that said, we did finish up and you were totally pleased with things, regardless of if Keem appeared or not. Mm-hmm. You were pleased as punch, said you want to do a second time. You know, I, I said, I'd like to do a second time. And to be clear, everything was great. And until the next day, right? That's right. Now, that, now, that, okay. now to preface yep. this, mm-hmm. we had actually in our discussions about this interview, the discussion was we were going to do this giant, hard hitting, harsh interview. And then once we got through it, I can't remember the exact wording you used, but basically it was kind of like, let's get through the tough thing and then let's do the fun thing, right? First, let's yeah. do the interview. Then let's you have, have you on as the guest, as you were intended to be originally. Right. That was the whole intention of this thing. Yep. Um, so you're absolutely right. After the interview, I jumped on my own personal stream and I expressed to my audience, listen, I knew it was going to be a rough interview. I knew he was going to ask questions that I wasn't going to be able to provide evidence of my side of it or whatever. And that's fine. I just wanted to have a place where people can see all of my answers. So they'll stop bugging me on my streams about this stuff because it really had nothing to do with my content. You know, you're talking about mobile games and expenses and shit has nothing to do with the broadcasting I'm doing every day of gameplay and stuff like that. I just wanted it to be somewhere else. So I actually was happy that we had covered all of that, all right? Mm-hmm. So by the end of that day, 100%, I was okay with how everything had gone down. Even the shocking surprise guest and all that of Keem, I, you know, but whatever. So now I would like to hear your methodology about what happened the next day on your stream because what you had publicly said, you could correct me if I'm wrong, you had mm-hmm. publicly said on Friday, the day after, you were going to do a decompression day where you guys were just going to sit around playing Mario Kart, shooting the shit, and having a fun day. That was the original intention after this crazy interview, but that is definitely not what happened. Yeah, so you're right. I said we're going to do a decompression stream, and the intention was, you know, and remember, once again, we're a month into the show, and at the time, I, we actually did test out, like, Friday gameplay streams, right? We were trying to test those things out. Now, some more context for you. The mm-hmm. last time the audience saw Adam is the last time I saw Adam. So Adam left. He went to go uh, have some dinner. So the, and the first time that people saw Adam the next day was when I saw Adam the next mm-hmm. day. Right? Maybe 60 seconds before that we started the show. Let's, let's clarify. Adam is one of the, your co-hosts. So people might not know. He's one of your co-hosts on the, on the side scroll. Yeah, he, he was. He was. He's doing his own thing now, which is great. And he had, just had a kid. And like I'm super, super stoked for him. Um, and he's welcome to come on the show anytime, which by the way, I do think that you and Adam should hash it out as well. Right. Okay. So with that said, um, so the next day we come in and, uh, we do a decompression and really just for the first time, have an opportunity to talk about, talk about what's, what just happened. Usually this would happen like you did, you know, you left and you went on and did your own decompression stream. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that was our first opportunity to do our decompression stream. Now, Adam thought you were full of shit, right? Mm-hmm. And and he said so in, in so many words, right? And when, you know, I think that's the thing about the the interview, which was really unique, was, you know, I had I had done a lot of research on you um and and everything leading up to based off of, you know, what right, right or not, what mm-hmm. what people were saying about you and questions about you. Well, that's a good this is a good point to break off before we get to the, your your friday stream so what exact research did you do like who did you talk to what information were you gathering upon when you went into this interview because i think people want to hear your perspective of what your notions were me going into this thing and how it turned out uh well i mean i 
I did talk to pretty much anybody and everybody that, that I could talk to about you. I mean, I can, let, let me see if I can find my, find, find my Google Docs about it, and I can tell you exactly what my, what my research was. Um, but, yeah, I went, went in and made that. But I, I do want to finish my point here. And okay, that go ahead. Yep. The, the idea that, that I had a somewhat of a background. I'd done a couple weeks of research on it, like way more research than you possibly should do for an interview, right? Mm -hmm. But my thought was, and I said this before and I'll say this again, I wanted to treat you with respect. I wanted to treat me with respect. And I wanted to treat the audience with respect, right? And, mm -hmm. and I had a pretty good idea of what the audience was going to look like, right, for this. Uh, here we go. I got this doc right here. Potential DSP questions, right? Okay. And this is, uh, you know, it's all, all various things that we that we touched on, right? Um, now, where did this come from? Was this like you asked people what questions you would want me to ask DSP and you've made a, a compilation? Is that what this document is? Uh, no, I think a lot of this was just uh, through various DMs and communication, things that people had asked and wanted to mm -hmm. know about you. Um, obviously the WB champions thing, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, various clips that, you know, broader questions, you know, how do you think, let's see, I'll just go down the list. Uh, I've been told not to interview you. Why do you think that is, uh, when you stream, who is streaming Phil or DSP? Um, mm -hmm. uh, what have you done to change the perception from a production standpoint? Right? right. So, like I said, there's a list of, of these things. Right. Uh, and then there's like some of my notes in here, right. Where we talk about. You know what there's i remember one one point in particular we were talking about your you know uh, you've been you've been doing this forever but you don't have a, di a business plan or a financial plan people were mm -hmm. really hung up about your taxes so mm -hmm. wanted to touch about that uh you know how you spend your money obviously with wdb champions which right. we can talk about that in a little so, bit so craig you, sure, you have to understand literally every question you just asked i mean just think about it every question you just asked is basically like personal stuff and it's stuff that my detractors would want to know okay so now I'm just telling you from an outside, you know, from your perspective, from an outsider's perspective, or even my perspective, it sounds to me like what you did for two weeks is you just said, hey, everyone who doesn't like Phil, contact me and talk to me. I mean, you even had a clip from It's a Gundam, one of the most infamous people who rags on me all the time as uh -huh. an audio question at the end of the interview. Papa and Gundam, yeah. what I would like to ask you right now, and I hope that you'll be honest with me. Sure, I, I, I will. In your efforts to gather information about me for this interview, did you talk to anyone who actually likes me? Well, I think I, I was open to talking to anybody who would, but nobody reached out that that said they really liked you. And I, I don't mean that negatively. I mean, I, I said- I Oh was no, there's a good interview. reason for it. And I'll explain it in a second, but you know, go well, ahead. But so with that said, like, you know, when you say you're gonna do an interview with somebody and you say, hey, I'm open to talking to all people, um, if if there are people who go out of their way to like you, um, they didn't reach out to me, right? Okay. So, um, so you know your theory of like I only collected things from detractors at the time. You know what? It may be right. You know, but but once again, it wasn't malicious. These are all things that that people uh, were curious about. And mm -hmm. you have to admit, Phil, when when you're essentially radio silent for a decade and people don't go in and and they don't have an opportunity to interview you it's important to flush those pipes out and just get it all out, get it all out there, right? It goes back mm -hmm. to the elephant in the room, right? When you have this, this giant elephant that, that everyone's staring at, if you don't have an opportunity to talk about those things, whether they're personal or not, right? Um, th then they, they should be addressed because that, that is what the DSP lore is all about. Right. So, you know, if, if you did have a, you know, to use the opposite side of this, the, the, uh, the detractor versus the, the champions for DSP, not a single champion reached out and was like, hey, did you know this? Did you know that Phil donates to charity? Did you know whatever, right? Um, and, and had they, then we would have. Now, with that said, you know, leading up to this, you, you also knew what this was going to look like because mm -hmm. you prefaced me. I mean, I have our emails pulled up and you, you gave me, you like sent me ammo saying, hey, this is what, you, this is what I think they're going to ask. And I feel like I've addressed a lot of these things. You sent me videos of you addressing these things. But as you said, you wanted this to be the definitive DSP interview, right? Right. So if you want it to be the definitive DSP interview, then naturally I should be listening to everybody who has criticisms of you. And if there is this lore that's attached to it, then I wouldn't be doing my job as the interviewer to, to do research good and bad about the right. interviewee. Otherwise, it's a fluff piece. Okay. And fair enough. And I accept that answer. But now I'm going to give you my response. Okay. Sure. And you probably don't know this. All right. 
the reason that my fans don't reach out and get involved in this kind of stuff is because my detractors, okay, those people who you were talking to to get questions to ask me, mm -hmm. systematically hunt down, harass, dox, and do horrible things to anyone who publicly supports me, okay? And I'm not just talking like, oh, someone was in the chat and said, I like Phil. I mean, they'll try to hunt these people down, find their social media, find where they live, find where they work, call them, harass them, call them pedophiles, do horrible things to them. There's been supporters documented who give me a $100 tip and then they get hacked and stuff. It's really, really messed up. I mean, case in point, Craig, do you not remember? Maybe you don't remember this. It was like a week or two before the interview. They tried to dox you. You remember that, right? And I told you about it. I said, just so you know, they gave your, your, uh, an address on the internet and I don't think it's real. And, and, you know, they did it to you. So if they're doing it to you, obviously... They're not going to, my fans who like me are not going to speak up in a public venue like that and be like, oh yeah, now I'll just, I want to talk about Phil. No, they'll watch me. They'll silently support me as they have done for a very long time, but they're not going to put themselves into the line of fire of these already deranged people. Okay. And you maybe didn't know that. So I got to give you the benefit of the doubt here that I got to trust you say that you were doing what you thought was fair, but a lot of people were going into that interview thinking, okay, he's going to ask tough, tough questions. But at the mm -hmm. same time, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the positivity about Phil's 16-year history on YouTube. The good old days or even what's good about what he does today, how he's improved, stuff like that. Like, there was none of that. It was literally just like negative, 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 negative. Now, I told you I was okay with that, all right? But from, again, outsider they're looking at the situation like Craig just sat around for two weeks claiming he did all this research. And all he literally did was talk to the people who hate Phil the most, compiled it into a ball of negativity and threw it at him. And that's the perception of that interview at this point from those who aren't my detractors, basically. In fact, just to give you another example, Mike Clone, who I was planning on possibly doing a documentary with this year, yep. said to me directly, you realize that that side scrollers interview was just for your detractors, right? Like no one else cares. No one else watched it and said, oh, it was literally a detractor interview. And that's, it's all it'll ever be. That's why you should do positive content like a documentary because you need to, to have parts of your truthful nature, your personable, you know, personality come out. No one saw that in the interview because it was literally detractor question, detractor question, detractor question. With all due respect to Mike, do you not think he was just puffing up your chest to try to get you to do a documentary with him? Of course he was. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Of course he wanted to do a documentary with me. But, right. I mean, from all this nonsense, there's always a little moment of truth, right? And it rings true. That interview, if you watch it back, you don't get to learn anything about me besides all the things people don't like about me. And that sucks because that's there forever. That's a, a video that launched you guys into prominence for a while, right? I think you can agree. Can we agree there? Can we just say that interview did give you a launching board to, to popularity, right? And I'm not saying that anything that came after is a result of me. I'm not. But was that not the piece of content that launched your show into prominence and people wanted to hear from the side scrollers? I think that it raised awareness that side scrollers was back. But but to, to think that anybody who watched that, like I would say of we had... Phil, 2,500 people tuned in live to watch that show, mm -hmm. right? We had 3,000 watching our show today, right? That's right. Of, of that 3,000 who watched our show today, how many of those of that 2,500 were there? Probably zero know. because your show today right. is a different show. It's completely right. different content. Well, it, it's not an interview. It's not about Phil. And, and I think I, I recognize that, right? Now, did it raise awareness? Sure. Is it why the show has been successful? No. You know, oh, no, I, and I agree with you. That your show is, is taken off. And I want to say kudos and congrats to you for having a very successful show now. I mean, it's blown up and that's great. But people didn't know about side scrollers until my interview. Is that a fair statement to say? It, it raised awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But, but just, just like our interview with the Tetris CEO or us talking about Concord or Dustborn or whatever, like, once again, the show was changing. At the, uh, we were trying to figure out what the show was and it took took about a year before we figured out what the show was yeah you, you remember you were saying yeah. on the show no politics and now it's like 
it's completely flipped. Like that's mostly what you're I, talking about these days. I you disagree. Know? I don't think what we talk about is politics at all. I think we talk about the culture of this stuff. Very oh, rarely. Uh, fa fair enough. I'm okay. Not hardcore politics. I agree with you there. Very okay. rarely do we actually talk about let you know Democrats or Republicans or anything like that. No, no. We talk about the culture of culture. I get it. Game, which I get which it. I think which I think from a from a video game perspective is way more important than whether a game gets a seven or an eight in a score. You know, yeah, um, and and I think that's that's what's limited because at the end of the day, you see a number of of the reason why side scrollers is working uh, is and our audience is growing is because we know that there are a bunch of as we say in our chat, our our community is called normal men. They're called normal men for a reason because there's a bunch of normal men who are looking around, going like, "Yo, what the hell is happening?" And this isn't right. This is not normal. And the thing about side scrollers, we do the exact same thing now that we did a decade ago. It's just in a different package because a decade ago, we were laughing at all the stupid shit that was happening in the video game space. Now there's just way more stupid shit that happened in the video game space that we can talk about it every day. Um, you know, it's, it's the exact, it's, it's the same premise. It's just in a different package. Um, so anyways, with, with that said, like I said, the show was evolving, the show was changing and, and you know, we haven't done like a, an interview on the, on the show in I'd say almost a year. You know, because uh, the interviews were fine and, and they were eventually, they were originally supposed to be uh, a regular weekly part of the show. But once again, it takes a while to figure out what the show is. And now we have a good idea of what the show is, who our audience is, and, uh, and we're there. Now, once again, did those interviews help raise awareness? Absolutely. But I, I can't, you know, I'd say it was a, it's a chapter of the, of the side scroller story. And it just as... Yeah just as um, Side Scrollers is a chapter of the DSP story. Sure. I, I will agree with you on that. The show today has nothing to do with me. I'm not trying to take credit for it whatsoever in that regard. You've done good for yourself putting it in its new own space, and, and it stands out. Okay. So getting back to now, because we did get derailed there, talking about the beforehand. So the interview happens. All of a sudden, all eyes are on you guys because you did this interview with DSP. Friday is supposed to be a decompression stream with Mario Kart. But instead, it turns into something else. So now let's get into this. So what actually went down on that Friday show for you? Yeah, we went in. We, we talked about things. And uh, we just we do what we do every day. We just talked about what, what's in the news. The difference was that we were the news. And the interview was the news uh, in the sphere. And uh, people wanted to hear our thoughts about it for the first time. And that was the first time we'd got together. So... Um, you know, you listen to your audience and when the audience says, we want to hear your thoughts about what happened yesterday, you do that. And for us, it was a Friday. So naturally we're going to, we're going to talk about it and then we're going to give the weekend to decompress. And then we're going to resume the show on normal on, 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 uh, Monday. It doesn't matter if Mario Kart was played or not. The, the intention was still the same was to talk about what we, uh, what just happened the day before for the first time, just like you did the day before with the decompression stream. Now, was it what you wanted to hear? No. Uh, but was it honest? Yes. And honestly, I think that when it comes to the, the, the reasons why we were upset was, and specifically Adam was, uh, was upset, was because he, he smelt shit. And whenever he, he'd say it, it, you know, it was, it was like talking in circles. And I, I think that there's like a lot of iron, like a lot of that stemmed from from the WWE Champions thing. That's where where a lot of the meat came from, right? So we asked you about that several times. Uh, you know, we, we got the runaround on it. We all knew it was the runaround, right? There was mm -hmm. there were you know we talked about you sharing your account, and then you know uh, and then that didn't happen, and that was when the internet went out and and everything associated with that. And so so you know we were upset about it, right? Because we, we smelt the shit. And I, I think that there's like actually like a lot of irony when it comes to this and that like just was yesterday, you know, I get, I get sent clips to you all, all the time and leading up to this, especially, you know, where, where you talked about WWE champions and you said that, you know, you spent, spent, uh, you know, for forever lying about it. Right. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so with, with that said, like, do you think that, be, you know, you admitted to lying about this, right? do you think that we had a right to be upset because we felt you were lying? We knew you were lying. You admitted to lying. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you feel that we have, we had a right to be upset the next day? Well, let me, let me, okay. Let me put it into, into these terms. Okay. When 
a guest is going to be on a show and they're going to be oh. interviewed and they know there's going to be hard hitting questions. And we were, that was all previously established. All right. We knew all this was going to happen. That's why I agreed to do the interview because I felt like this is going to be at the definitive interview or whatever. Okay. Never in my wildest dreams did I expect that the next day after the interview, you were going to do that. You didn't even tell the public you were going to do that. And now let's be honest here. What actually happened on that Friday show is you talked to my detractors almost the entire show. You were reading all of their contributions as they rolled in. I think some of them were previously from the interview the day before. I want to be fair here. I think there were like leftovers you hadn't shouted out the day before. And then there was a ton of contributions that came in that day from my detractors. So you just sat there reading them. And okay, you're upset with me. You don't believe me. You smell shit. All right. But there's a difference between saying, well, we just did this big interview. We don't believe him versus actually like actively participating in memes that they have about me. Your entire cast laughed act, act, act on the show, Craig, together as if this was something funny to do to deride Phil. I was the guest on your show the day before for five hours. Mm -hmm. I was on your show and answered hard hitting questions. You didn't have to believe the answers. Hold on. Did you? answer because you oh did. i did oh indeed i answered you just didn't like no, no. the answers phil don't don't <laughs> flip don't flip that on me because you didn't you were dishonest with us and that's, we smelt that it's we still an answer that, it doesn't matter if it's honesty or not it's still an okay, answer then let me ask you this phil will you will you apologize for lying to us because that's that's where a lot of that came from is like we knew you were lying right okay and and, and i gave you an opportunity multiple times I, I remember pleading with you phil just come clean on this and the, the opportunity was there and had you not had you just come clean at that instance, everybody would move past this. So mm-hmm. I do think that, like, once again, why were we upset, Phil? What's the root of all this? We felt and we knew and we smelt a lie. We smelt it, right? So and and you admitted yesterday to lying to us. Mm-hmm. So that to me stings because you're not only lying to me, you're lying to your audience, you're lying to my audience, and you're lying to everybody else. So you should apologize to me and Adam and Travis and Blabs and everybody else who watched that show because they were expecting the definitive DSP interview and mm-hmm. what they got was lies. That's not definitive, Phil. That, that's the issue I had with this. Okay, now, since we're getting into the nuance of it now, let's go out talk because the lies you're talking about are WWE champions. That's what we're talking about. Let's oh, hone but, in but, on But it. will you apologize though? Because that's- Let's, let's, cause... hold on. Let's okay. talk. Let's do this, all right? Let's like man to man. Don't demand something from me now. Let's not, talk I'm like asking. men. I'm asking. Okay. If in that interview, all right, I had been honest with you and completely transparent, and I said, fessed up to everything, right? Immediately, you would have said, that's great. Prove it. Correct? You would have said, prove everything you're saying. And we gave now, you the opportunity to. Okay. Let, now, let's be real about this, because I don't want you to lie to the internet about it. I, I want to be just, real no, about this. I will this. not. I'm not going to lie to the internet. I'm not. In that interview, all right, you said to me, Show me evidence of what stuff you're saying. Show me screen captures or whatever. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. No, I was never going to do that on the fly because I'm the kind of guy I want to make sure if I'm going to do something like that, I want to make sure everything's safe. I want to make sure it's correct. I'm not going to send you something just to say it wasn't good enough. I want you to show you the definitive evidence to prove what I'm saying or whatever. Okay. So I'm thinking in my head during the interview, because I didn't know you were going to hit me with that. Honestly, I thought you were just going to ask me questions and I was going to answer. I didn't know you were going to say, this is your opportunity to actually clear this up. I never thought you would do that. So when you, I'm thinking in my head, okay, how can I prove it? How can I do this? How can I do that? I need to get this stuff together for you, right? And you had left the door open. And we, in fact, this is what, near the end of the interview, we were talking about this. If you want to, you know, clarify everything, you can send it to me after we're done here. We even left the door open for that, correct? You remember that, right? I'm not making that up. That was correct. Right. And and, and to be clear, I actually have our emails, emails, pulled up sure if if you have those pulled up i think that you can read your part and i can read my part just just so we're so everybody is on Mm -hmm. the same page and and there's full clarity on all this stuff yeah oh i don't need Uh, to read them i know exactly what they say (laughs) well i i I think it's important just so every you know this is us talking but yeah we'd be ignorant to say that there's not a couple you know a few thousand people who who once again this is part of the story of how we got here Mm -hmm. right so I, I do think it's important because I don't want to leave any context out. So do, do you mind if I read our emails after after the the uh, just just our back and forth that we had after because I think it does provide context to what we're talking about here. Sure. This is this is the the email that was sent after I got off the show. 
yeah yeah because yeah. i believe there was an email then and then i emailed you again after i'd eaten dinner about are you available are you going to be checking this email box and that was where we had left it and then the next day you emailed me something in the morning correct that's the, so, the chain of events okay so i i have the it happened on uh i guess we talked march 16th of last year right mm -hmm. uh so you emailed me at 8 18 and said hey craig i'm i'm uh so i'm interested to hear your thoughts on how the show went mm -hmm. i really hope that it was it was a big benefit to you guys if so this may have been the only time in history that my infamy has actually helped something i know you'll i know you'll want to get back to normalcy but i'm looking forward to hearing from you uh, again about your about the possible next appearance my viewers are telling me that they think that you and adam were too harsh but I disagree completely, as I told you on the podcast. You are nothing but fair. Uh, but there is there is pretty much 100% consensus that the Keemstar bit was intrusive, gave him free plugs for his own content, and took away, for, took away about an hour that should have been more on topic. I didn't mind. Uh, I, I didn't mind, but that's the vibe my viewers are sharing with me. Uh, I would I would like... Uh, I would likely be best for a repeat appearance to just uh, to just be us to avoid people feeling like it was it was a quote surprise or trick to sh or shock me. How often do you check this email? I'm still 50 50 on showing you my champions account at this point, especially because of what Keemstar said. I feel nobody I, I feel nobody would be able, uh, would believe you even if you vouched for me. But I respect you and and still considering it despite the fact I'm incredibly scared my info will once again leak and hurt me. So that was the email that you sent me at 8.18. Okay, which was 5.18 yeah. my time. Well, actually, what I don't know what time zone you are, but it was... Uh, central, so so 6.18 your time. Gotcha, okay. so it was right after dinner, correct. Okay. Now, so, I will clarify what that what was going on, okay? Now, did you, did you see my show last night where I talked the truth about WWE Champions for the very first time? Have you seen that at all? Or did I had you just a, hear I had a, I had a clip sent to me, but okay. I, I, haven't, I haven't like watched the whole thing. I've watched okay. like 90 seconds of it. In a nutshell, all right? Yeah, the account was mine. I had it for many years. And after years of harassment by my detractors, I sold the account, okay? So at the time that we're doing this interview, I don't have access to the account. So I can't prove really anything, right? All I could do is I could show you like a new account, which is the account that I had currently. If you remember, you would ask me straight up in the interview, hey, do you still play WWE Champions? Yes, I do. But it's on this new account. It's not the original account that the detractors knew about and were stalking me for all these years. No, I, I, gotta, I, don't, I don't really care about WWE Okay, Champions. okay, no, fair about I, I really here's, don't. Like, I, I, don't I understand, but you have to understand the situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you, I'm 50-50 on sending it, but if you had said to me, yeah, okay, I'm still open to it, send, I was going to show you the new account. I was going to try to explain all this to you and say, this is why I can't just on a whim show you everything. It wouldn't have worked. You easily could have said, oh, you made this up. This is a bullshit new account or whatever. Yeah. It's, a, it's a convoluted story. It is, yeah. okay? So what was your response to me reaching out to you saying, hey, I have the information. I'm 50-50 on it. What was your response to that? Yeah, so, and once again, let's let's make sure we have all references here. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, you send that March 16th at 8, 8, 18 p.m. So mm -hmm. it's e it's evening time for me, right? My morning routine is I wake up and I start prepping for the show, right? So we're live at 11. I'm getting up. I'm getting prepped for everything. I have not checked this email, right? I have not mm -hmm. checked this email. And you know, because I told you prior to uh, in our original correspondence, I don't check this email. I don't check this email very often. Uh, sometimes it'll go weeks before, you know, before I check the email, right? So you know this. So, um, so you send me that email. The following day, uh, March 17th, I respond at 7.45. That's the next time we have any sort of correspondence. Is that a.m. or p.m.? That is p.m. Okay. So it's been, it's been about 23 hours. And you've okay. already done your show for Friday. It's already taken Correct. place. Okay. It is done. So here's my response to you. I said, and, and I, I felt like this was a very fair course, very fair assessment of things. And you can tell me if I'm wrong. I said, hey, Phil, I think the show went, went okay yesterday. We talked about it at length on today's show as a debrief. I think we're, we were all left, uh, I think we all left the interview mentally exhausted and feeling incredibly frustrated as, as at the end of the day, we want what's best for you, man. 
the things that were the things that are laid out about everything, the WWE mobile games, the bank stuff, etc. It just doesn't make sense, man. There's too much evidence saying it's yours, and and your only evidence is just saying it's not. I feel like we gave you multiple opportunities to turn this thing around, but you you just uh, but you just seem so dug in. Even in the face of insanely detailed evidence, you wouldn't take it. Even with Keemstar coming on, I tried to lay out the, the similarities you feel towards him and the way people feel about you based off of things that you've said online. It was tough. Honestly, I'm just disappointed, man. Like I said, I and we want what's best for you, man. We very much do, but you have to want what's best for yourself. When you're ready to take that step, I will gladly help help you man uh, help your uh, help you man on your journey. You deserve to get to level two. You know, uh, you kn I know you can do it. And that's the that's the email that I sent to you. And I think that was very fair. You know, I I did not lie to you and be like, hey Phil, it was great. Uh, it was it was spectacular. Can't wait to set up set up number two. We, as I said in the email, we were exhausted from it, and you know mentally tired from it, physically tired from it. And we talked about that. You know, we talked about that on, on the, the following debrief. So, you know, had, had we done that debrief immediately after the show, chances are we would have said the exact same thing, probably, probably worse, you know? But you can see in that email, we felt lied to, we felt exhausted, right? And the reality is, Phil, we were lied to, mm -hmm. right? So, and, you know, self-admittedly, you said we were lied to, and we knew that. So, naturally, when somebody lies to you and continues to lie lies to you, you're going to be upset. Right. So, we were Fair upset. Enough. Okay. So, I, I, I will confirm everything that Craig just said is true. That is correct was what was in those emails. I know for a fact that's exactly how it tra transpired, okay? So now we, he said it. I, I didn't say it. He said it. He literally read the emails word for word. No one can say that I made this up. Okay. So we got to follow the order of events. I'm on your interview. Five hours, hard hitting questions. I lie to you about WWE champions. You leave the door open and say, you can send me the information after to clarify all of this. Okay. That was mm -hmm. said directly in the interview. You agree to that, right, Craig? You yep. did say that. Mm hmm. I go on my show. I say, that was a good interview. I'm okay with it. I even email you, say, I'm okay with it. I'm 50-50 about sending you this stuff. Do you check your email? You literally just publicly admitted you don't check your email. Right? Well, in, in, in this situation, yeah, it's been a, been a day. Yeah. So you ended an interview, the hottest piece of content you had ever made at that point on side scrollers. You knew mm -hmm. all eyes were on you. You knew people were looking to see if I was going to follow up with you and send you this information. And you decided not to check your email, but instead to do a show ragging on me the next day. Is that a correct statement? I would say that in between me ending the show, being done with the internet for the day, going to sleep and waking up the next day and then doing the show, like Bill, Phil, as we said at the time, you had one opportunity to send the, send the stuff. It wasn't there, right? It, you, you passed on that. You oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Passed on during, what? You during, just admitted. You just during, admitted the door was open to send you the information when no, I got during, it together. During the show, Phil, during the interview. Craig, it's, we're it's, on it's, an interview and a show. Right Craig, Craig, Craig. We're in an interview. The idea of the interview is for me to answer your questions. Right. It's not stop the interview. Let me dig into documents and get you screenshots and things proving. That's not what the interview was. Never no. once before the interview did you ever say that's what it was going to be. And like I said, if I'm going to send you something, it has to be sure that it's proving my point. This was a convoluted story. It's not I could just send you a screenshot. I got to try to prove now that I've got a new account and it's not the old account that I sold the account. This is complicated. It's not something I can just do during the show. I was literally, to, to be transparent with you now, as I sent you that email, I had everything ready. I told you I was 50-50. I literally had it all ready to go. And all you had to do was check your email and say, I'm here, Phil. I'll check it. And I would have sent it to you and you would have had it. And instead of having a Friday show where all you did was beat me up all day, you would have had the Friday show saying the big reveal. 
DSP cleared the air. He said he was a liar, but here's the truth. But you didn't check your email. You told sorry. me. <laughs> like, what do you want? What do you want, dude? Like, like, I'm sorry that I didn't check my email for 23 hours. That's not how people communicate in 2023. And I know that's how you communicated, but like, I don't, I, I didn't check my email for 23 hours. And I'm sorry that I didn't check my email for 23 hours. I apologize for that. Will you apologize for lying? I apologize for lying, but I don't want your apology that you didn't check your email. I want your apology for being completely disingenuous about everything that happened after the fact, after the interview. That's what I, I want. I, but the thing is, Phil, I don't think we were being disingenuous. Like, I think we were being completely honest with how we felt. You know, like, like I said, I, we spent five hours talking to you, getting the runaround, man. And like, it was, it was not meant to be like, this was, once again, I go back to the definitive dark side Phil interview. And it mm -hmm. wasn't. So I'm disappointed in that because there's things that you, you, you're telling us now you lied about. We, we felt it. We knew it was happening in real time. We felt like we were getting gaslit. So naturally, yes, I felt exhausted and tired and honestly didn't want to deal with you, which is why in that email, I said, look, man, we're just disappointed. Like I said, I want what's best for you. We very much do, but you have to want to help yourself. Is lying to us on stream helping yourself? No, of course not. You deserve to get to level two. I know you can do it. Right? Craig, what you told me in that email you sent me on Friday, basically in other words says, we don't actually care what the truth is because I had the truth and was going to send it to you and you ignored me. No, it's not that I didn't ignored you. It's because I didn't check the email. And not That's called email. ignoring because you no. knew that was our line of communication. You asked me to send you the information I was going to and you chose not to check it. You actively ignored the way that I could have cleared my name. And then you went on to do a show that made you tons of money defaming me on the internet. That's exactly what happened. And okay, there's no so way that you can ever clarify that because it's in black and white. You just well, admitted it. You read it. You just admitted it publicly that you didn't check the line of communication we had that I could have cleared the whole situation. Is, was that, is this like the gotcha? Like, there's no gotcha. There's no okay, gotcha. Okay. You read it. I actually wasn't going to read the emails. Phil, like, you I, did it. Phil. I don't apologize for not checking my email for 23 hours. I'm an, I'm an adult with a family and kids. And honestly, I was tired of it, right? The fact that I did check my email on Friday night was fascinatingly amazing that I did that, right? Um, that's a big dub, but I'm sorry that you felt betrayed that I didn't check my email. It's, and once again, there's a big difference between ignoring because I, I didn't know the email was there in the first place. You have to know it was there to actively ignore it. I did not actively ignore your email. I didn't know it happened. So I can't ignore something that didn't, I didn't know happened. Craig, in the interview, we ended it with, the door is open, you can send me the information. Mm -hmm. So you didn't know it happened. Do you need to have a bomb go off when someone sends you the thing you directly asked for? Would you not even in a moment think, hey, maybe he's going to contact me today about this and I should check, send, you know, because how else am I going to send you these documents anyway, by the way? It has to be an email attachment, right? I can't just call you and give it to you. I didn't have your Discord or anything, right? We were doing it through some other streaming client. So I, I had to send you an email, all right? Well, now, here's well, the thing. Here's the thing. We're, we're, we can on, talk on, about on, this for the rest allow, of the show. Quick, allow, me to, allow me to kind uh, of... One more. Okay. And then I, I want to move on because this sure, is... Sure, taking, sure, sure, sure. And that's, that's fine. I'm just going based off of our track record of emailing back and forth. Okay. I I'm just looking at how we emailed back and forth leading up to this thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there's pretty much a, at least a, a day between every correspondence that we had, right. Almost every single time there's, there's an, there's a, uh, there's at least a day between our correspondence. So based off of our track record of corresponding with each other, I, you know, I'm not going to go to, like I said, I'm Craig, this is a really bad cope, bro. This is really bad. You're no. saying, we just ended the interview. You said the door is open, send me the information. And then you just say, well, I'm just not going to check for the information. That's a bad cope. It, previously, our correspondence was never a reason for you to check right away. Now you had a reason and you didn't. Instead, you actually did the opposite. Instead of giving me the fair shake, but see if I was going to send you stuff, you went on a, a, a show defaming me the entire next day. That's so, the well, worst situation possible for you, but you I, didn't I care. A, Phil, you got me. I didn't check my email. I'm sorry. Hey, with that said, why do you need me? If you want to put this out there, like you have an X account, you have a Twitter account, you have social media, you have, you have a, 
a, a YouTube community tab. You can post all this stuff available, right? Mm -hmm. Like literally right now, you've said you have it pulled up. Like you had all this stuff available. It's you still got to be on your computer somewhere. Is, is this you, your gotcha moment? You're going to try well, to no, get me to post my shit on the internet? No, no, Phil, Phil, I'm saying is you don't need me. You never did need me, right? I and needed, I, you're, and that's actually untrue because what you don't understand, Craig, because again, you didn't know this, is that any time that I try to defend myself, the detractors move the goalposts. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a little innocuous thing that doesn't matter at all. It could be a big, full-blown lie that I've been doing for years. Whenever I try to do something, all right, they move the goalpost. Right now, I could post all the information up, and they would say, that's fake. That's not true. So it doesn't matter what I post or what I don't. Now, in the case of you, you had presented yourself as a neutral third party. You were going to be someone who was going to do this interview and be fair, and then you were going to judge for yourself, which actually seems like that's what happened except you didn't actually give me the opportunity to send you the information to clear my name and tell you what really was going on. Now, well, whether or not you I'm checked your email I, or not, it's not I'm a big sorry. deal. I'm sorry I didn't check my email. And I would like to take this moment to apologize to you yeah. and apologize to all of your champions and especially all the detractors for not checking my email for 23 hours. I'm sorry. Right. Okay, so let's move on from the email because this is going to be so boring if we keep talking about this. And I know that your time is valuable. You said you can only be here for about 90 minutes, right? So yeah, another you got, 20 I got about another 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. The next day you do a show. The entire mm -hmm. show you're ragging on me saying you didn't believe me at all. Which, you laugh. Okay, go ahead. Which you didn't give us reason to. Okay. You admitted to yesterday. Fair enough. You laughed okay. with my detractors. You did all the memes. You got a whole bunch of detractor contributions, correct? That did happen. Uh, sure. sure. Okay. Did you continue to do content based on me after this at all? Um, not especially. You know, I think there was a, uh, I don't remember the context of it, but I remember seeing, you said something about us and I was just kind of like done with it. And I think I went live uh, and I, I did what was called a monetize the hater stream. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I don't, I don't remember the context of it, but I remember being like, like I was done with it, right? That's the thing, Phil, you gotta understand, like we've done almost 400 episodes of Side Scrollers, right? Your interview was one day, right? Now, once again, was it a chapter of the show? Yes, 100%. Do we appreciate it? Yes, 100%. But like, we were done, we've turned the page. Just like, I don't watch your stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. Just like you don't watch our stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. I, mm -hmm. I have too much going on to worry about what somebody else is doing online, right? So. You know, you get brought up occasionally, but it's it's just part of the side scrollers chapter in the, in our book at this point, part of the lore. Just like side scrollers is a part of yours. So you know, um, so yeah, I was pissed. So I went live and and it and honestly, I, I would like to give credit to <laughs> to my boy uh, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers for his you know monetize the hater thing. So yeah, I think I went live with a with a monetize the hater thing and um, and just kind of railed for a little bit because i was tired I don't, I don't remember the context of it i was just tired of hearing you talk about us so you know it is what it is um do i regret it uh yeah kind of but at the same time you know it, it's it's just part of what it is okay all right i wanted to hear that straight from your mouth that this happened because i was you know i the truth is craig i don't even know because like you said i don't watch your content so i actually don't know the truth of what happens and what doesn't happen i just hear people saying are you aware that right now Craig has a stream called Monetize the Haters? He's making money off of your detractors. He's saying that he wants to be on your show. I'm like, what? I don't know what yeah, you're yeah, talking okay, about. Okay, okay. You, you know, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, that's what it was. You were live. That's right. You were live. And I think you you were talking shit about us or something along the lines. And, you know, talking about how bad we were to you. And and I was like, and this was another thing. We're like, look, I will come on your show right now and do exactly what we're doing. And this was, I don't even know how long ago this was. It was just like, let's just get done with this. And as I've said at, at the start of this, like I reached out to you multiple times to do exactly this, to just get through this shit. And I told you like, I don't care if it's on our, our channel or on your channel or some other channel, right? Let's just do it. So I was actually glad that you reached out because you know, this is, I don't think about you a whole lot, Phil, except for when people bring, mm -hmm. bring you up to me. And Fair enough. Um, and you know, you're upset that people are like, you know, giving super chats because well, maybe, maybe they enjoyed what we do. Right. And I'm not going to say like, you know, some people were just excited to see that the interview was done. They were congratulating us for, 
Craig, the they don't enjoy what you do. They enjoy that you were bullying me. That's what it was. You were doing on, the whole on, stream, on, monetize on. the haters, and you were making money off of making fun of me, which is what everyone else does too. Bill, which, why was I live? Because you were you were talking shit about us. So, okay, now on my stream, was so, I sitting there saying, hey, Craig haters, come on the stream and dump on Craig, and let's accept all the donations for everyone who doesn't like Craig. Let's talk about all Craig's dirty laundry on my stream today. Did I ever do that, Craig? So, I, I don't know. I don't watch your stuff, but but you're telling me. No, oh, I never did that. Not you, once. You, you, the you only gripes I ever had with you was that, how you behaved after the interview. That's Hold literally on. it. That's the only problem I have with you. I don't have a problem with anything before or during the interview. It was the fact you left the door open for me to contact you. You ignored that line of contact. You did a harmful show. Didn't oh, now, oh, because you know what? Now, now I got to talk about this publicly, all right? Are you aware that because you didn't give me the chance to defend myself after the interview, you did a bullying show where you ragged on me and I wasn't there to defend myself against any of that? Do you know how that hurt me and my viewers and my content? You okay, probably hold don't. On, hold on, hold on. Let, let me just talk about this real quick. You're up, and by the way, this is something that I do want to talk about. You, you were upset that we went live and talked about this, and you were pissed that you weren't there to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. You did a decompression show literally immediately after. You did a decompression show about Keemstar last week, and mm -hmm. he wasn't there to defend himself. You're doing, you did the exact same thing that we do, Phil. You whoa, 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 whoa. You just proved you don't watch my decompression shows. You just proved it. The decompression shows have nothing to do with talking about and ragging on the guest that just appeared. So, so you, in you fact, never, you, last you week we came. Just happened? Last week you we came. I had a whole stream where I said, we are not going to talk bad about this man. Instead, we're just going to talk about the future, building bridges and things like that. We didn't say one negative word about Keem. I didn't accept negative contributions. I told my audience, do not contribute and insult Keem. And okay. they didn't. Because that's wrong. So, that's so you, capitalizing on an already bad situation. Because now I'm going to talk, Craig. Please let me speak, okay? Go crazy, After go. the interview, I had to cancel a whole fucking show that I had planned that was called DSP Asks It. I had guests lined up to be on the show that I was going to interview. It was a big project that I had lined up for my React channel. I had to cancel it because the guest said, well, after the side scrollers appearance, they really dumped on you. It's not the interview we have issue with. It's the fact that they dumped on you. So now literally everyone who saw your interview thinks you're an asshole. So because of that, we're canceling. So I had to cancel the whole show. My followers came who, out and said, we who, didn't who, mind who, the interview. I'm not done you? yet. I'm not done yet. Okay. Let me finish. Okay. After the interview, my followers said, we don't care about the interview. We care that they ragged on you after. Now it makes you look like an asshole. Now that makes us look like an asshole. We all want to be your fans, but how can we do it when the entire interview hates you now, right? And you don't understand what you thought you were doing was decompression. Let's just be honest. But what you did is you gave more avenue for the people who already hated me to hate more. All you did was you gave a public grandstanding spectacle to my detractors. And the worst part about it, Craig, you publicly monetized it. You monetized bullying. That's the problem with what you did the day after. You hurt my business. You hurt my followers. You hurt me. You owe me an apology for that. I don't care about you not checking the interview. I, or excuse me, the email. I care about the fact that you not once, but then again later down the line, monetized hate against me. I literally never monetized hate against you ever, ever. sure about that phil you've never once monetized your hate against us you never talked poorly about side scrollers oh i absolutely talked poorly about you but i certainly didn't have entire shows based around it inviting all of your detractors because you want to know something craig they contacted me about this show they came me they said here's all the dirt on craig and you know i know what i told them this is the truth craig i said fuck you I said i'm not going to do that i'm better than that I'm not going to talk about Craig's dirty laundry because that's not what this is about. I could have easily been doing that all along. Everyone has skeletons in the closet. We all know this, but I'm never going to be like that. I, I want to build bridges. I don't want to burn them. All right. At the end of this conversation today, I don't want to be at, at your throat. I don't want you to hate me. I just want us to be at peace. Even if we never speak again, I just want us to be at peace. I'm tired of this internet drama bullshit, but you hurt me bad with your behavior 
after that interview. And I want you to understand how bad it was for me. I had to hide for a year. And now to just show you, Craig, how different it could have been. Did you see my appearance on Kino Casino recently and how different no. that went? No, I didn't. Okay. Kino Casino is a show over on Kick. They had me on. We joked about everything. We joked about WWE champions every. We made a big laugh about it. But they also treated me like a respectful human. They didn't monetize hate against me. We had fun conversation. We watched video clips. We laughed. Do you want to know what it was? I was a guest on their show. Like I was supposed to be a guest on your show, but mm -hmm. never happened because we did the interview. You want to know what happened? Public opinion has changed, Craig. You may not realize this. Right now, people this like is, me this for the first the time in ages. Right. That's right. Yeah. Because well, so they gave me a chance. Because they didn't rag on me. They didn't bully me. They were bullying me. But once I personally talked to them nicely, I said, hey, just have me as a guest. They, whoa, what the hell? So everything they say about you is, is, you know, actually isn't true. Well, not all of it. But the thing is that being treated kindly instead of being bullied and being monetizing the bullying led me to a redemption arc where now I'm finally fessing up to all the stuff I've done wrong. And it's all changing for the better, right? That so could have happened with your interview. But you that's not no, no, what no, no, you no. did. We gave you an opportunity to fess up during the interview, Phil. Which that's I couldn't do because I couldn't prove it during the interview. I had to get the information together, and I was going to do that, and you didn't give me the opportunity. Well, no, 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 no. You, did you have any of that information available when you talked about this yesterday? All you did was you just, you just, talk, you just talked. That's it. So all you That's needed right. to do 18 months ago was just talk, just like you did yesterday on your show. No, right? whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're moving the goalpost. So first it was, the only way anyone was going to believe you is if you sent me all the documentation during the show. Well, you're, you're, now you're, you're, you're okay. saying, I'll, I'll, I could have just said I'll, whatever. I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. But I, I will give you that, right? Documentation would have helped your case, 100%. With that said, Phil, like just you saying, yeah, I played WWE Champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my name was this, whatever it was, right? Um, you know, and, and just just saying those things yeah, yeah yeah absolutely that would have gone so far right and i feel like we we extended the uh extended the olive branch many many times during that interview right and once again you left that interview interview feeling good your your point of contention is that after the show we spoke honestly about our frustrations once again why were we frustrated phil because we felt lied to which was validated yesterday literally yesterday mm -hmm. later on did i do a monetize the hater stream 100%. Why? Because you were talking shit about me, right? We've never gone out of our way to go off and say, hey, it's time to dump on Phil because it's fun to dump on Phil, right? We, we dumped because we were pissed at the time. The result of the interview, we felt lied to, once again, validated, and you were talking shit. So naturally, it was like, hey, and, and the idea of going live there was let's go on Phil's show and hash it out like we're doing now. So look, I'm, I, Phil, I mean this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you were hurt. I'm sorry that your community was hurt. And I'm sorry that you felt that way for a long time. That's why I'm on this show. I want to help you close the door with this chapter, right? I'm not your enemy. In fact, I've been your biggest champion. I've gone out of your way, as in that email. I want to help you get to level two, whatever that looks like, right? I've, I've said that continuously in every single email correspondence we've had. I've said, hey, I want to let you know, let's get together, let's hash this out, let's move forward, right? Every single time, even when it comes to inviting you on the show, uh, our, our one-year anniversary. Hey, Phil, come on the show, nothing serious, let's just come on, it'd be fun, people would, would, would have it on. Hey, Phil, do you want Street Fighter Six is coming out, you want to help hash this out, let's just hash it out, let's talk it out. It'd be a great way to build a bridge, which once again, that's something that you want to do. I, I listen, if we want to go with the build a bridge metaphor, I put down lots of wood over the last 18 months trying to build a bridge. And every single time the email wasn't responded to or, or um, maybe you didn't check your email. I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, Oh, I did check knows? the email. It's just there's no way I'm going to be playing Street Fighter for the guy who doesn't play Street Fighter where I'm not going to benefit from it whatsoever. You will because you you're going to get another boost from my appearance on your show playing Street Fighter. Phil, I mean, I'm not going to get a boost from that. Phil, we could have done it on your channel. That's the thing. You didn't even respond. But isn't that the fun of it? The idea mm -hmm. that you play Street Fighter Six, you lay into me for fucking nine round for nine matches. You destroy me. You're the definitive champ, and all of a sudden the king is back. Nobody cares right? about that, Craig. No one cares but, about you but, playing Street Fighter. It, what no. are you talking about? But they care about us getting together, and Street Fighter is the conduit to do that. That's what I'm getting at. Move past the idea of Street Fighter Six, Phil. It's bigger than Street Fighter Six. The idea was just get together.
Oh my goodness. All right. Like, well, here's the thing. You just apologized to me because I was hurt. I want you to apologize to me because you did it. Because you know it was wrong. Uh, I don't think it was wrong. Because I, like I said, you <clears throat> yesterday, as you said yesterday, you lied to us. Mm -hmm. You lied to us. We felt that lie. We knew it was. We knew it was a lie. Look, was it reactionary? One hundred percent. I'll say yes. It was wrong in that it was reactionary with the with the monetize the hate stream, right? That was a reactionary thing. Am I proud of it? No, right? And you know what, Phil? I'm going to do you one better. Give me a charity of your choice. Give me a charity of your choice. I will. I will donate the that day on that stream. We made six hundred thirty three dollars and eight cents. I will mm -hmm. donate six hundred and thirty three dollars and eight cents to a charity of your choice. Craig, if, if you will, if, Craig, if that if will you, help close the book. If you actually cared about anything that you're saying right now, you already would have donated that money. So mm. you can do with it however you want. But the fact is you have done absolutely nothing in this appearance to show any kind of responsibility or remorse for the things that you did regarding me, my community, or my reputation after the interview. And you've publicly admitted you didn't check the avenue that you could have gotten actual evidence of what I was going to tell you about the truth. So I did not check the email. So I, I really, I, I don't really know I can help you anymore at this point. You know, I, it's like I've been saying to everyone recently, what's happened in the last month and a half is pretty remarkable. All right. Basically, everyone for the last like 10 years who really like messed with me and hated on me, it's kind of all coming back. Karma, you know. Now, in your case, you're definitely not egregious. Okay. I want you to understand something. After today, I have no grudge against you whatsoever. All right. I'm going to act like none of this ever happened. Really, I mean it too. I'm going to act like none of this ever happened. We're just going to move on with our life. You're going in one direction. I'm going in another direction. All right. But you have to understand that, like, when you have a platform, you have a responsibility to be responsible with that platform. If you were going to have the big, definitive Dark Side Field interview, and even if you thought I had lied the entire interview, which I did about WWE champions, that's what I lied about. Okay. You still have a responsibility after the fact to follow up. That's what you didn't do. You actually didn't do the most important part. What you did was the equivalent of if, let's say, Barbara Walters was going to interview a big prominent person. I don't know. We're, we're going to make this up. Barbara Walters was, was interviewing Donald Trump, okay? And she does an interview with Donald Trump, and she hits him with all the hard-hitting questions. And he answers with bluster and everything. And a lot of people don't believe Donald Trump or whatever. The next day, she goes on a public appearance where she literally says, I don't believe a word Donald Trump said. He's an asshole. He's a piece of shit. I don't like his hair. I don't like this. And then as she was doing it, all the sponsors of Democratic causes are sending money to the show because, oh, this is great. She's ragging on Donald Trump, who we don't like. That's literally what you did. That's not integrity. That's, that's bullying for profit, all right? No. And the fact that you can't admit that you did this, you, you say you're sorry it hurt me, but you're not sorry you did it. That just, it, it speaks to your character. I didn't have to do anything. You literally just did it to yourself on the show. And that's so, the thing. I didn't have to monetize hate against you at all. You did it to yourself. And I'm not happened. going to monetize hate against you ever, ever. It's not going to happen. There's not going to be a decompression stream after this where we shit on you at all. Because I don't have anything else to say once you're off this show. It's done. You did it, so, you did it yourself, my friend. Just, just to be clear. So when Barbara Walters, who is dead, interviews Donald Trump, I yep. think she's whatever. When she she, is, she passed away. Rest in peace. Okay. She was a great, a great interview. So, so she has this interview with Donald Trump. Is she not allowed to talk about it afterwards? Oh, she could talk about it, but she's not. Oh, she's not allowed to monetize hatred toward the person she just interviewed. And here's why. Do you, do you here's why. No, no, no. Let me clarify why. Because if you're the interviewer, you're supposed to be fair and impartial. Correct during the interview. During were the interview, not? you were during the interview. Okay. But then. But then, if that interviewer immediately discredits the person they just interviewed, there's not one fucking person who's going to go back and watch the interview with a fair take and a subjective glance at it and say, okay, so I will judge for myself if he told the truth, okay? No one who watched the interview gave me that shot because you literally, after the interview, said, he's a bold-faced piece of shit liar. Let's laugh at him with his detractors. Ha, 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 ack, 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 okay? So your interview intention originally was meant to be fair and balanced, and it became a hit piece because of what you did after. And I don't think you've ever really consciously known that, Phil, but it is. It's probably, it's a giant hit piece against me, and it always will be. Phil, 
you did it to yourself, man. You had an opportunity with all this. If it's a hit piece, it's your words. Your words. I you was going to send you everything you, you, you asked for. Talk. You had a chance to talk. Okay, go ahead. Go know. ahead. Go ahead. All right. You said with your own words, you thought it was a very fair interview, right? Yes. If people look back on that interview, right? And they are upset about the interview. It's because of the response that you gave. Nobody's going back and watching the, the monetize the hate stream or no one's going back and watching the decompression stream. What they're watching is the DSP interview. And if they're, if they're upset about something that was, that happened, or if they have a, 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 if they think a certain way about you or me or Adam, because of that stream, it's based off of the conversation that had, that we had then and not based around anything that happened afterwards. Right. That's the main point of contact that people are watching. So look, you can, you can try to put the noose around my neck all you want, right? And that's fine. Go ahead. If, that, if that's what makes you feel better, that's fine. But ultimately, Phil, it's your words. It was your lies that you told that, that led to the ultimate distrust with this stuff, Phil. And, I, and look, I'm sorry, man. Like, I hope that you can move past this. I, I hope that we have an opportunity to work together again in the future. I, I do. I genuinely do. Because I do think at your core, I do think that you are a good guy who just wants to just wants to play games and make positive content, right? And you know what? I think that's extremely admirable. But you can't be upset when we talk about something and somebody super chats about it, right? I'm sorry that happened. And I'm sorry that, that your detractors gave us money, right? But you know what? It's going to happen again. It, it happened today. Somebody super chatted $2, you know, saying, hey, did you hear about this? Am I, should I give that $1.40 back? Right. Like, I don't know how to handle that, Phil. And I'm not going to apologize for people who gave us money because they felt we either did a good job or we felt like we missed something. Or did you hear about this? I'm not going to apologize for that. I told you I will gladly I will gladly give that money to a charity. Right. And I'll give it a chair. Give it to a charity in your name. Right. Um, Great. But well, if, if you don't want that, that's fine. And, and, and that's totally that's what? totally OK. You, I mean, I'm speechless. You actually think that giving that money to a charity a year and a half later is going to somehow make you look good or something? Like, what no, are you talking no, no, about? No, 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 no. I hope that I, I don't, I could care less. I, what I, what I care about is helping you move on because you're, you clearly are clinging onto this, right? And like I said, I'm sorry that this happened, right? But I, I'm not sorry for the words that you said, right? Once again, if somebody mm -hmm. has, a, has the, uh, feels a certain way about you. It's based off your actions, right? I'm live two hours a day, five, five days a week. People see me, they know me by now, right? I've been doing this for almost 20 years. So people have a pretty good idea of me and my character. And for you to attack my character, I mean this with all due respect, Phil, go fuck yourself because you <laughs> don't know. I've gone out of my way, Phil, to treat you with respect via email the entire time. I've gone out of my way to treat you with respect and be courteous to you continuously. And I'm sorry that you're upset that I didn't check my email for 23 hours. I'm sorry for that. Like, and I'm sorry that I, I, that I was pissed that you were talking shit about me, right? But I hope we can move past this. I really do. And I hope that this helps you turn the page. Will it, will it do it? Probably not. But one thing that, that I do really hope is I hope that people don't send you super chats in, re in regards to me. But you know, no, I hope people send you lots of money in regards to me. I hope people, I'll be the first one talking about myself. And I'll send you a super chat momentarily here in just a few minutes. I don't right? want you to send me any super chat. Right? But I want to. I want to. Well, I can't right? I can't stop you. If you really have to do it, I mean, go. You, I can't stop you from doing it. I don't want any money from you. I don't want anything from you, I, really, at this point. Like, you literally, in, in a situation here where we were being completely cordial, you just told me to go fuck myself publicly Phil, on the Phil, stream you realize that right it, why i didn't why, i didn't do it you did why because you attacked my no no character. no not why you did it we were being cordial i just had an entire show with keem last week mm -hmm. and i have way more gripes with keem than i have with you Phil, and that Phil, never happened did you attack keem's character oh yeah of course i did and then and he went back at me and we went back and forth and we hashed it out yeah listen then keem should have told you to go fuck yourself <laughs> all right so there you go and, and, there, and, folks and, there you have it there you have it, night and day. I mean, you can't, that's all. I mean, I mean, really, honestly, but we got, actually, we're over. I'm sorry. I have to, I'll apologize for two things. I'll apologize, number one, that I did lie to you during the, 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 the interview, 
which that was, that was wrong to everything we're talking about. That was wrong. And number mm-hmm. two, I apologize to the public that I lied for so many years, but I already did that last night on my own show. Mm-hmm. So they already know about that. All right. And I'll apologize to you now because we're taking too much of your time and I know you got to get go. All right. So let, but let me close let, with this. You close and then I'll close and we'll be good. Okay. You close first. I want you to really think about your actions here, right? Think about this logically, please mm-hmm. do. Why were we pissed the next day? Mm-hmm. Why? I'm asking you, wh- why were we pissed? Oh, you want me to answer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it sounds to me like you wanted me to come clean on your show and get a really great piece of content out of it because it was going to be the definitive time when DSP admits to everything that everyone's been saying that he's been doing so for so long. And when I didn't do that, you basically had a nothing burger of an interview. Five hours of a nothing burger of an interview. But it was good for my detractors. They wanted to crap on me, so it was a good piece for them. But you didn't have anything for anyone else. So it didn't give you what you were looking for in the product. That was the problem. You were really hoping you were going to get the big confession. That's why you kept putting me on the spot about send me the screenshot, send me the screenshot, when we had never discussed that before the interview. You didn't get it. You got upset about it. And that's why you didn't check your email because you couldn't get the moment anymore in the interview. You thought you had wasted five hours of your time. And what you said was, well, now I'm going to get him back for that tomorrow. I'll make that money in this nice destruction show that we'll do on Friday. That's actually what happened. Um, You're wrong about all that. Okay, right? fair enough. But you asked me for my opinion. So that's, there sure, you go. Sure. And, and that, that also tells me where your head's at. We were mad because we were lied to. Had you not lied, none of this would have happened. If you were just clear and honest with us, like you've been with your, with like you were yesterday, everything, not, none of this would have happened. We would have, we could have moved on. It would have been like, yeah, do we think it was full of shit? That's fine. And, and would, would the Friday stream have happened the way it did? Probably not. Right. Would the monetize the hater stream have happened? Probably not. Because if you just were honest from the start, none of this would have happened. So you can point the finger at me all day long. But at the end of the day, Phil, what's the old saying? You still got three more pointing back, right? Back Mm -hmm. at you. So look, I'll take my responsibility. I hope you look within yourself and you take some responsibility in this as well, right? And that's fine. I do hope that we can eventually work together in the future in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you come on Side Scrollers and we do a regular show. If you don't want to deal with a Mm -hmm. politics-driven show that isn't, uh, isn't, you know, whatever you said, right? Right. Um, you you were extremely you were extremely uh, nice with your words, and by nice, I'm I'm being sarcastic right now. And and when you told us to go fuck ourselves and all that stuff, so um, I would like to give you a fair shake someday on side scrollers if you're open to it. Like I said, I, I want to make sure that you and everybody else knows that I am open to working with you in some way, shape, or form. But I hope more than anything, I hope you're honest, not just with your audience, but with yourself about the situation. Um, I appreciate your time today, Phil. I got mm-hmm. some dad dudes I got to get done. Thank you guys very much for your time. All right. uh, Now, hold on. Before you go, let me say my piece too. All right. This will be, it'll be quick. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. This is the end. There's no more feud between you and me. Do you agree? That's it. We're done. We can stop going at each other's throats. Phil, I haven't had a feud with you for 18 months, man. That's fine. Okay. Whatever you say, monetize the haters, but you don't have a feud with me. You want me to play Street Fighter with you. You don't have a feud with me. You want me back as a guest on your anniversary show because you know it's going to bring you hype and attention for my detractors, but you don't have a feud with me. Okay, but okay, fair enough. You don't have a few, but we're agreeing to this now. It's over, right? We're done. Yeah, we're good. It's, it's over. Yeah. Okay, so, and you you were asking me now, a year and a half later, will I be a guest on your show, which was no, what originally was agreed to, correct? Like, that's what you're saying. It was originally, that was the agreement. We were going to do the interview. And then after that, I was going to have the opportunity to be a regular guest on your show like everyone else had been, correct? Right. That was the agreement. But- and after the interview, I sent you that email saying, like, oh, we were just disappointed, right? And the offer wasn't there anymore after the interview because we felt lied to. Okay. So but now. That said, I hope we can move past it. That's what I'm saying. Now that we've hashed it all out, right? We're all good. You're saying you, you're extending that olive branch and you're saying that that opportunity is there again. Possibly. Not a lock-in, but it's possible that I could be on your show. Sure. Okay. I, I'm not I, interested. Well, Go fuck yourself. Okay. All right, guys, so that is the appearance of Stuttering Craig on the Level 1 podcast. I hope that you all enjoyed it very, very much. It was a good one, right? I hope that... uh... (laughs) All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut the stream down, 
and I am going to do a decompression stream right now. But I need to shut everything down because I can't appear on camera right now because my camera cannot work on in this video and on the on the stream as well as in OBS. Like Discord had an issue there, so all I have to do. I have to shut everything down. So I'm going to end the video here. Those who watched the interview, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to be right back live on the stream. Okay? So let's do that. I'll be literally be right back live on the stream with the, the decompression. All right? I'll be right back, everybody. I got the drip going. 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 I got the drip. It's like a faucet that's dripping. You can't make it stop. So what do you want me to do? Have a have a mute button that every second I'm tapping the mute button just in case I, I'm gonna have to clear. Like this is what I mean. These, these dumb kids. This is what it is. It's dumb kids. 